Hi, and welcome to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the differences between a manager and a leader and trying to figure out which one you are. Good day, everybody. Welcome to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. I am Kale Hauser. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about, and this may be kind of a, I don't know if a basic subject is the word, but this is a something that is uh, certainly a little more fundamental in its nature uh, having to do with leadership. And that is the difference between a manager and a leader. And ultimately, I was thinking about this, and I heard something recently in uh, in another interview and, and training I was going through, was it comes down to who has the accountability, who retains that accountability in your organization. And one way to think about it, and I think this is an, an appropriate way to think about it, is a manager keeps the accountability on his team versus a leader gives that accountability to the people on his team, the other people around them that they're um, in charge of leading. And, it, and if that's not quite clicking with you, the way to think about that is it comes down to certainly responsibility, but who is accountable for that task, that um, project, um, that action being done? And a manager certainly is somebody that, you know, as an organizer, you know, when you think of the classic sense of the term manager, you know, I think of, you know, whether it be the, the store manager um, or, you know, at McDonald's, the, the restaurant manager, um, at, you know, your favorite food chain, Longhorn Steakhouse, whatever the case may be, that's the one that's ultimately responsible for, you know, usually having to do mainly with people, the scheduling of people, um, the direction of the the organization, again, whatever, the, whatever that is, whether it's a restaurant or an auto mechanic shop, um, they may have wear multiple hats, you know, such as advertising or, you know, finding new clients or sales. But a manager really comes down to people, right? They are managing their business and in turn, managing their people. And a lot of that goes into, you know, vacation days and training and handling sick days and coverage of shifts and all those different things as come up with handling people because there's a thousand different things that happen every day in people's lives. Versus a leader, how I think about this is, is the leader understands the tasks that have to happen, right? They understand the operational end of things and the aspect of things that there are just certain things that have to happen. You have to order the pepperoni to have a successful pizzeria, okay? That just has to happen. There has to be somebody that orders toilet paper. There has to be somebody that um, pays the, you know, knows who to call a plumber if the, if the bathrooms, you know, get clogged up. Whatever the case may be, there's that operational end of it. But the leader, as far as the people go, the leader is the one that gives that accountability to them. He empowers those employees or teammates, you know, whatever your structure is, to make those decisions and to to realize that the employees themselves understand what has to happen. And if that's within their responsibility as their job di- to, you know, job title or duties, then they just kind of handle it. It doesn't have to be the manager going to the janitor saying, hey man, uh, make sure we've got enough toilet paper to get us through the weekend. You know, we've, we've got the team coming in. The, the janitor just kind of knows that. That's part of their, their responsibility and what they're accountable for, okay? and that certainly goes back to expectations as does does pretty much everything. But I wanted to talk to you just to have that sense of clarity between being a manager versus a leader in your organization, okay? And what it comes down to is who holds the accountability, okay? And I would argue, and that's kind of the whole point of Kale Hauser leadership, is that we want to be leaders. We want to give that accountability away to our employees, to our teammates, to our organization and those different roles within it. Uh, whether you are the no kidding business owner, you know, you founded and started in blood, sweat and tears and now you've built your business with, you know, however many employees over time, you need to start being able to give that accountability over to people. And that goes back, you know, several steps in order to get to there, you know, with your higher process and your goals and your organization um, and your business identity, all those things. And there are a couple of things I want to touch in, touch on in this podcast that kind of all are interrelated but different sides of the same six-sided dice, if you if you will. Um, and that is the concept that everything, as the leader, everything happens because of you. Okay? 
Let me say that again. So everything that happens to you is because of you. And you may be going, oh, wait a minute. That, that's no way that's the case, right? Not everything. And I would argue certainly everything. Um, Jocko Wilnick has a really great book, and he takes this a little bit to the extreme with his book, Extreme Ownership, right? And that's his, basically, you are responsible for every little thing. And I'm going to differ from him in a little bit and say you're not necessarily responsible for it, right? Because we're not responsible for a drunk driver. Uh, we're not responsible for cancer necessarily. I mean, maybe you're just eating garbage foods and that happens. Um, or you, you know, have chosen to live underneath some power lines, whatever the case may be. A little jest in there, you know. Um, but everything certainly happens because of you, you know, because of your attitude, because of your outlook, because of your choices, because of your fears, um, because of your past, all those things um, conspire either for you or against you, but because of you. And, and, and your leadership role and how your teams react to you is no different, okay? So we create our own objections. And a really good example of this is, you know, especially if you're in the sales realm, and certainly if you've gone through any sort of sales training, you know, you talk about the greeting and you talk about fact finding and you talk about, um, you know, the demonstration of your product and you talk about handling objections. And this is a lot of where you as the salesman, the individual, um, create your own objections. So if you, you know, say you're selling BMWs and you're like, I've never spent more than $15,000 for a car in my life. No one in my family has ever spent more than $15,000. You know, we're, we're the type of person that buys a the, the base model, cheapest model out there, and we drive it for 20 years until literally the rest starts showing through, and then we get another base model, cheapest model out there. You're probably not gonna do very good as a BMW salesman or a Mercedes salesman or a Ferrari salesman because you have an objection to spending that much money on a car, right? That It just doesn't exist for you. And that will come through during your greeting, during your fact finding, during your demonstration, and certainly during your objection handling when you've got people that are like, man, you know, I just, I don't want to spend, you know, whatever is 65000 $110,000 on this car. And you're like, yeah, basically, I agree with you. I wouldn't either. And then there goes your sale. But you relate this back to the leadership side of things is when you apply this to people, when you apply this to how your business is run, you are creating your own objections. And it's very difficult to have that kind of self-awareness and that um, self-analysis to realize where that is happening. So maybe you're trying to get people to, you know, just stop punching in and punching out, you know, doing their eight hours and then boom, they're done. You know, they kind of, they see it as a manufacturing type of a job where you just clock in, you do your certain amount of widgets that you do every day and then you leave. And you want them to kind of take ownership and, and have more pride in their work instead of just doing the bare minimum when maybe that's not necessarily you. Maybe you're the one also that's, you know, getting there right, you know, two minutes before eight o'clock or whenever your start time is and you're leaving two minutes afterwards and you're not putting in that extra effort um, within your business to where they can see that, right? So that's just one example, not necessarily what applies to you, but start thinking about where in your business that you have an objection to. And this may not be quite obvious. You may have to kind of dig a little bit, whether it be a family culture that you came from, um, something, you know, that a, a work ethic that was either instilled or not instilled by your parents or your grandparents or aunts and uncles, you know, whatever your family situation that you came out of uh, certainly has a big impact on that. And, and you'll see that a lot and you should be aware of that, right? You know, people that come from middle-class families typically end up in middle class type of uh, social social structure and careers and vice versa families that come from you know wealth typically end up having that kind of mentality and they end up doing very well in their life and vice versa if you come from a poor mentality you will probably the odds are that you will probably be poor pretty much most of your life because of that mentality and those objections that are ingrained into you uh, so i wanted to talk about that for a second with how you change those things as the leader of your organization. What can we do to change those things? And one of them is really understanding and recognizing that going, okay, I want to be a Ferrari salesman. Uh, I want to own a Ferrari dealership, but I've only ever owned a Kia dealership. So I think, you know, and I, nothing against Kias. I had a Kia before, um, you know, so I think, you know, what's an average Kia price? $28,000 is like, 
the right amount to pay for any vehicle. That's all you ever need. It does what it's supposed to do. It gets you from point A to B, has a really good warranty, blah, 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 right? You can all your, make your case for a Kia and $28,000 for a new car. Um, you will not do very well as a Ferrari dealer because Ferraris are not about practicality. Okay, they are about um, status, certainly. They are about um, pleasure and reward, uh, all those other things. I've honestly, I've never been in a Ferrari. It's not really my cup of tea, but I understand that I, based on my, in my not my income, but my background and how I kind of view cars, probably would not do very well as a Ferrari salesman because I would create a lot of those own objections as I'm talking to other people. It just isn't justified to me. And maybe it will be in the future at some point. You know, people can change certainly as our circumstances change. But right now I recognize that that is a limitation in me and I just wouldn't do very well. So as the leader, you need to be able to look at those things. And you can do that by looking at the problem areas, especially if you're getting pushback from your employees or from your workers or from your teammates uh, or even your, um, your peers in your business or other businesses around you. Analyze where that's coming from and how it is that you are creating that. Okay. And then I want to take just another step forward or backwards is why are you listening to this right now? Okay, the hardest part, the hardest part of any process, especially when learning something new, the hardest part of this whole process is to let go of all that old BS that you've been hanging on to. Okay, the hardest part about this whole process of becoming a different kind of leader, becoming the leader you, that your organization deserves, that your business deserves, that your employees deserve, is letting go of all those bad examples, of all those bad, poor leaders in your past that are affecting you right now. Listen, I'm assuming that you're listening to this podcast and you're seeking out some sort of leadership training, whether it be with me or, or other companies or other um, influencers. Uh, certainly, there are many of them out there because you've recognized that, hey, I could be doing better or I'm not very good, you know, whatever the case may be but you're still holding on to all of that old BS that's just holding you back and has been holding you back. And I would encourage you, don't waste your time by coming in here and going, oh, I already know that, oh, I already know that, or, oh, that doesn't make sense, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, that's ridiculous, okay? You're coming here because you want that instruction, you want that information, and you need to be able to process that and implement it, okay? Don't just disregard it. Even something that you maybe have heard before. Uh, you're not the same person that you were a year ago or six months ago or 10 years ago when you went through a management class in college, okay? Uh, process it differently. Look at it in different lights and how it applies to your situation and where you want to be. Um, and pending all else or, or regardless of all else, give it a try. You know, how much worse off could you be just, uh, you know, taking that advice that you're getting, whether it be this about being a difference between a manager or, letter, or a leader or anything else that we talk about in past or upcoming podcasts, um, give it a chance to, to see if that makes a difference for you, if it kind of opens a new window or new door into your leadership journey. Okay. So I really want to take that second. I know we talked on or touched on a couple different things, um, but mainly that takeaway of a manager versus a leader. There are times when a manager is needed, especially in early stages when somebody's learning the business, uh, learning you know your processes and your your operating procedures. Uh, but you have to transition to a leader and give that accountability to your workforce versus you holding on to it for the entirety of your career, because otherwise it's just going to consume you. All right. So again, thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment on your favorite podcast platform or shoot me an email at kl at Have a fantastic day, no matter where you are at in the world. Bye.